pesticide poisoning is a major health hazard faced by operators and can be caused by casual and careless attitude while handling crop protection products. Every year, numerous cases of poisoning report annually. Such cases are difficult to manage and can also result in fatalities. In a desperate bid to increase the yield and save the crop, crop protection products are sometimes used irresponsibly. Farmers end up using a cocktail of pesticides without adequate precautions. Risk is increased if the hazard quotient of the chemicals is not understood and practiced as indicated in the directions for use leaflet provided with the product. Dr. D. Kanungo, a world-renowned medical toxicologist who has spent the last three decades associated with WHO as an expert and a human health risk assessment specialist who has spent all his life on the management of pesticide poisoning. Well, pesticides are really important for the farmers. The farmers, they can produce more by avoiding the damage due to pest and diseases by using pesticides. The pesticides are meant for killing pest and diseases. About 15 to 20 percent of the crop are damaged every year due to pest and diseases. What we have to do is use the pesticides so that we can produce more food. As for the Food Security Act, the government is bound to provide sufficient food to every individual of the country. The pesticides, however, are toxic in nature as they have to kill the pest and diseases. If these pesticides come in contact with the human being, the poisoning may occur. Crop Life India is an association of plant science industry leaders promoting safe, responsible and secure usage of crop protection products, including storage and management of empty containers. We are committed to our continuous efforts in educating farmers on safe usage of crop protection product for sustainable agricultural ecosystem. A pesticide exposure is an incident that involves any contact with human body that has caused harm or may cause harm. This includes the exposure to the skin, the eyes, through inhalation or through ingestion. Pesticides differ from one another and the potential hazards are different as well. The first step is identifying the route of exposure. Simultaneously, identify the substance by saving the container or material if possible. A combined understanding of the route of exposure and the kind of pesticide helps to determine further course of action. In case of a pesticide poisoning case, the first thing we have to do give is first aid. We have to bring the patient out of the scene. After bringing out of the scene, what you have to do is you have to remove the clothes which have been drenched by pesticides and keep it inside a container. The third thing you have to do is the resuscitation. Resuscitation means you have to uh, resuscitate the patient and through rule A, B, C. A means you have to see whether the airway is patent. B is whether there is breathing is there or not and C is the circulation is perfect or not. For that you have to give the high flow oxygen if available. Intubate the patient if there is breathing has been stopped then what you do is mouth to mouth respiration you can do. But you have to protect yourself that you should not be poisoned. Next one the intravenous infusion of the normal saline or any other fluid you have to give so that all organs get proper oxygenation. Then you have to, if the patient is very serious, then you have to send it to the ICU. Then you do the clinical examination, see the pulse rate, see the respiration rate, see the blood pressure, See the condition of the people, whether it is dilated or constricted. See whether the patient is sweating, all this, and also auscultate to the lungs, what is the condition of the lungs. All these things you have to do during these first symptoms. If there is a seizure, 
For convulsion, you have to give the anti-convulsion drugs like Dizepam. Suppose there is a swelling of the pesticides, then never do the gastric lavage. Look to the label, whether label say to do so. Gastric lavage is not going to do any benefit to it. When you bring the patient, first you put him on the left lateral position with the neck little bent so that you can avoid the aspiration. The gastric emptying is delayed and there is no blockage of the breathing. And if there is a paracot poisoning, never give oxygen. This is contraindicated. Pesticides may enter the body through the process of mixing, loading, transporting, spraying and washing of equipment. When a patient arrives, ask the patient or their attendant what happened, how it happened, when it happened, where it happened and finally why it happened. Generally, the principal route of exposure is through skin contact. Respiratory entry is less common, likely due to low vapor pressure of many pesticides. The rate of absorption of pesticides through skin varies vastly, ranging from scrotal absorption to palm absorption. Symptoms of poisoning can be mild, moderate or severe ranging from headaches and nausea to difficulty in breathing or loss of consciousness. In case of acute pesticide poisoning, the poison control center must be informed while moving the patient to a medical facility. The container label can be used for reference. There are specific recommendations for managing acute pesticide poisoning in different scenarios. Contaminated skin, discard contaminated clothing, shower victim with soap and water, respiratory exposure, move victim to fresh air, convulsing victim should be protected from blows to head. If breathing has stopped, resume artificial respiration. Pesticides in the eye, wash the eye immediately for 15 minutes or more. First aid kit must have eye wash bottle. Swallowed pesticide. Wash mouth with water. Induce vomiting if victim is conscious if indicated on the label. The first thing precaution is you yourself. As a medical doctor, you have to take all precautions so that you are not poisoned. Not only you, all health care givers have to take all precautions like using of protective clothing, gloves, masks, etc. so that you are not poisoned. The second very important thing is you treat the patient, not the poison. Third one is while taking the history, you have to say you have to take the occupational and environmental history of the patient. Fourth one is many of the symptoms in pesticide poisoning cases are similar to other common diseases. You have to have a differential diagnosis for that. And basic thing is you must give the symptomatic treatment to the patient and resuscitate. Well, my closing remark for the healthcare professional is that whenever they get a patient, they should not presume that all are pesticide poisoning cases. They have to have a differential diagnosis, number one. Number two, if no antidote is given, better to, as I have told you, treat the patient, not the poison. That means the symptomatic treatment has to be given along with the first aid. For more information, kindly visit CropLife India's digital module on Health Practitioner's Handbook.